a large part of the narcissist main plan to be in control of you involves catching you off guard. They're going to pop up on you out of nowhere when your defenses are down to try and spring a certain agenda on you. They'll bring something up, maybe a touchy subject for you, something hurtful or traumatic for you that they'll bring up when you least expect it to try to get an emotional shock out of you so that they put themselves in a position of dominance. They know that you have to prepare yourself in order to be around them. They know exactly how wretched and disgusting that they are. And they understand the great lengths that you have to go to pre-gaming, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, before dealing with them. The monitoring spirits around you and the spirits that are in them, they know exactly what stages of preparations that you have to go through in order to armor up against the narcissist. And if you watch my last narc video about psychic powers, you'll understand exactly how the narc knows that you go through these things. It brings them great joy to know how off-putting you think they are. And even though your thoughts about them strictly consist of how disturbing they are, it still makes them feel very important and validated. They've fully embraced the villain role. So don't think for a second that it bothers them when they realize that you've discovered the full scope of their evil. The only thing that threatens them is you potentially exposing them, but they're used to this and they'll just go into incognito mode away from you as they start to, to build a smear campaign against you behind your back and start blackmailing you. They have to create all these other elements, variables, and these narratives to distract everyone around them, including themselves, from the fact that somebody has found out that what they really are is just a demon with a mask on. So they really don't have too much of an issue with you knowing exactly how evil they are. They just got to take some extra precautions. And the only thing that's changed is you just have become public enemy number one. And the sadistic games that they've been waiting to play with you can be elevated to a whole nother level. This is what they do. And this is not the first time that they've desperately had to tarnish someone's reputation in order to suppress the truth from coming out about them. They will always use the element of surprise to maintain control and keep those that are around them off balance. This can be a sudden change in plans or their behavior. Unexpected outbursts and verbal attacks and even seemingly small but calculated acts that are intended to disrupt your sense of stability. This is just another one of their witchcraft techniques that they have at their disposal. And this one in particular probably gives them the most excitement. And remember, witchcraft is literally just manipulation and intimidation to control others. So technically, all narcissists are witches and wizards. Now, using sense of surprise is always generated by the narcissist's sense of entitlement and that extreme boredom that they feel once they devalue the last thing that they demanded from you, which no longer entertains them. Because everything that they get, they devalue till it withers away to, to worthlessness. They enjoy pushing your boundaries to see if they can make you jump. They'll suddenly show up to something when not at all expected or somewhere that they don't belong at all. They'll abruptly walk off in the middle of an important conversation or an intimate activity that you're having with them. They'll lavish you with a sudden gift that just so happens to be used or damaged. They'll arrive somewhere early at an inopportune time to catch you in a state of dilapidation. The only time they'll ever be anywhere early is to surprise you. They'll slip in a shocking, hateful, or an explicit comment into a normal conversation, making you think that you imagined that 
They may give you a gift that is exactly what you didn't want. They abruptly change or cancel plans without an explanation or a reason. And then they'll make you ask questions first instead of just explaining themselves in the first place like a normal person would do. These things and much, much more are all designed to maintain their minute-to-minute power and keep you in permanent disarray. They thrive in disorderly chaos, and when everything is scattered, they have this home field advantage because they're demonic, and demons absolutely thrive in pandemonium. So whenever the narcissist can cultivate this type of chaotic environment, it literally gives their demons power. Now what they refer to as supply is literally just another word for fuel for the narcissist demons. It gives them power to infringe on your boundaries in such an egregious and intrusive way. They get bored very easily. So you know that they got to add a little salt and pepper onto their demonic exploits as much as they possibly can. Now it's amazing to me how they can operate this way time after time after time and always keep you off guard. I've experienced this firsthand uh, most recently with literally my next door neighbor. I got to be quiet because she's literally right there. She always knocks on the door really loud at the most random times to ask me about my life, how my daughter is doing, blah, blah, blah. You may think, oh, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But no, I made the mistake of telling her about myself early on when she first moved in. It's difficult to comprehend the spiritual power a Jezebel possesses. You may catch yourself offering them personal information whenever you have a conversation with them. And to your dismay, later on, you realize that you confided in them way too much information. And the information that you surrender to them will likely get used against you. Or in this case, used as a ploy to lure you into conversations. When you tell the narcissist things, you know instinctively that it's none of their business. And it can be so confusing because you don't even understand why you're even offering them this information in the first place. The more information that you give them, the more vulnerable you become to the wiles of Jezebel. There's something about the deceiving power of Jezebel that seems to just pull conversation out of you. It makes you feel that you almost owe them your personal information. It's a demonic drawing of energy because they become completely consumed with whatever their agenda is in that moment. So that energy becomes so strong. Those demons in them want that information out of you, the chosen one. So they create this this spiritual black hole to suck that out of you. But when this person is exposed, you will become the target of this armed and dangerous Jezebel who has deliberately milked you of this information. They will twist this knowledge to their advantage in an attempt to gain the upper hand so that you are made to look like the fool and they are made to look like the righteous one. Only by refusing to back down and counter all of their accusations with the truth will you be able to stand. In this case with my neighbor, I allowed them to draw information out of me that in turn was used against me for seduction. I preached the gospel to her. I gave her my whole testimony and a lot of my life story. I even uh, uh, prayed with her on multiple occasions. She knows that I used to have issues with substance abuse and that Jesus has changed my life. Right away after I divulged all that to her, a few nights later, she knocks on my door drunk and she tries to seduce me. It didn't work. And it's not just that. She's knocked on my door many other times, always at the most surprising, inopportune, abrasive times, sometimes at midnight and and beyond. Sometimes I've ignored it and sometimes I tell her I'm busy 
Like I open the door, a quick one liner, and then I close the door. And I know that she's a narcissist and there's monitoring spirits operating through her. She always leaves notes uh, in my door telling me that if I need anything, she's there. She always tries to shower me with gifts. I got home from work one day. I, I was inside for a couple hours. I went back out and of course she was right there. She's always right there. And she was like, oh, you got home from work early today. And the thing is, is that I never told her my work schedule. So in that moment, the spirits that are operating in her wanted me to know that they were watching me. Oh, yeah. The gang stalking networks orchestrate your neighbors intentionally. She was not there when I moved in. She came afterwards. I believe personally she is a plant. You may think I'm crazy, but best believe the enemy does things like this. There are literally incentive programs. You can literally go on Indeed.com and you can get a job spying on people. They'll move you into an apartment. They'll pay for your vehicle. They'll buy you a computer. Everything. Gang stalking these days against the chosen is very organized. So I literally have the loudest, most disruptive, most obnoxious narcissist in the whole entire apartment complex by far. Literally sandwiched right up next to me, right on the other side of that wall. The noise campaigns are real and these tactics are very calculated. I don't even like living where I am anymore. But the good thing is, is that I'm growing stronger in patience and fortitude. What the enemy means to disturb with, God uses for fruits. So I don't, I don't even acknowledge her when I see her. And she hasn't knocked lately. She's even given me food, which I threw right into the trash. Never accept food from people you don't really know like that. And she bought me a laundry basket because she somehow saw that mine was ripped. That went into the dumpster as well. I was also um, praying for a different neighbor that lives on the other side um, out on the balcony one night. And of course, she was there. She's literally always there watching. I had mentioned uh, Jezebel when I was praying for him. And I saw her face immediately change. Her countenance dropped and she like looked away. She like flinched when I said Jezebel. And then she retreated into her apartment after that. Literally every single time. I'm about to go somewhere. I hear, like, when I think about going somewhere, I hear her loud voice right outside my door looking for attention from somebody. These monitoring spirits, they preemptively orchestrate things based off of your movements. You better believe that. But anyways, when the narcissist tries to hit you with the element of surprise like this, and it's a person that you have to deal with, Expose them. Bring their behavior to their attention, especially if it's family that you have to see all the time. Let them know that you know what they do. You have to try to create boundaries. It's better than saying nothing. Do not tolerate Jezebel. Let them know that you're on to them. Again, this is only if you have to deal with them and you're forced to have conversations with them. You're forced to have a relationship with them. Otherwise, cut them off. Now, there is so much wisdom in understanding the narcissist's witchcraft tactics of manipulation. Once you accumulate this knowledge, you start to see the behaviors everywhere. And then harmless, seemingly uh, well-meaning behaviors that you've seen from people all your life in the past, they start to have a whole new hidden layer to peel back with many mysteries underneath. It's very important to understand that the narcissist does things like this because there's going to be countless opportunities in the future for all of us to continue using our discernment to spotlight these demons that walk among us all around us. And the way the world is headed, we're going to be able to utilize our gift of discernment and it's going to be essential to our survival out here in these end times. So you need to feel blessed that you know what you know. And as always, keep seeking the truth and desire to learn more 
about how the kingdom of darkness operates. Wisdom is knowledge applied. So everything that you're learning, when put into practice, will make you more wise. And you'll continue to elevate out here even higher. You keep reaching new heights, hitting new tiers. And you're already in a whole nother league from a lot of these lower ranking narcissists out here that used to be able to take advantage of you. Have you ever uh, came across a narcissist and they were literally no match for you spiritually? That's what's happening out here right now. But at the same time, these devils are out here evolving at the same token. And as they de-elevate into their upside down kingdom, they're growing in rank too. So it is very important to continue to seek more truth, seek wisdom and understanding about this spiritual battle and how Satan operates. You're doing the right thing. You're on the right track. And you are being exalted over the narcissist in your life. God bless you. And remember that Jesus is king.